from ITN, the ITV Weekend News with Katie Derrick. Good evening. As many as 170 people are dead tonight after a train caught fire in a mountain tunnel in Austria. It was packed with skiers at the time, many of them children. Downing Street said tonight it's believed some Britons are among the dead. The blazing train became trapped in a tunnel underneath the Kitzsteinhorn Mountain, 50 miles south of Salzburg. With the latest, here's Terry Lloyd. The mountain fell silent tonight as rescue teams realised there was nothing more they could do. The task now is to identify the victims, and that won't be easy. So many perished in the blazing heat that all the authorities can do is to ask families if anyone is missing. British and American holidaymakers are thought to be amongst the dead. The train, packed with skiers and snowboarders, was deep inside the tunnel, high up the Kitzsteinhorn mountain, on a trestle gantry when fire broke out. It meant the passengers, many of them children, were trapped inside and rescue teams were helpless to reach them. This was the awful aftermath as the fierce blaze destroyed the train and smoke billowed out of the tunnel's exit in the Alpine ski resort. Firemen fought their way inside, only to find the metal base of the train. Nine passengers in the rear coach smashed their way out and were airlifted down the mountainside to safety. There they were given oxygen after breathing poisonous fumes. They broke the window and they came out through a window. But the fire got through the whole train very fast and so there were only eight people who came out. Normally the train ferries 1,500 people an hour from the valley station to the summit's popular year-round ski resort. Today it was packed as weekend skiers headed to the mountain to enjoy ideal autumn conditions. It's thought about 180 were on board when the tragedy happened. Scores of helicopters stood by to help, but the news came back there was little they could do. The vast majority of passengers had stood no chance of escape as the fire ripped through every coach. Initially, first aid tents were erected to deal with the casualties, but not much more than a handful appeared. It's been described as the worst tragedy of its kind in a country used to avalanches and ski-related deaths. A day of mourning was declared as news spread and families realised sons and daughters, mothers and fathers had not returned to their hotels and homes. A day planned on the slopes had turned to disaster. Tonight, mountainside candles were lit for those who died. Terry Lloyd, ITN. What has shocked everyone is that the train was designed to resist fires and was checked just this year. On its launch in 1974, the railway was considered one of the most advanced in the world. Its angled trains, carrying up to 180 people, are made of special fire-resistant materials and don't have engines. They're pulled up the steep track. Normally, it travels almost two miles under the mountain to an upper station where skiers leave for the summit. But this morning, just 600 metres into the tunnel, the train broke down, then caught fire, trapping those on board. Fresh air from below forced smoke to the upper station, killing three more people there. Well, our correspondent Bill Neely is at the scene of the disaster in Capron. Bill, have we got any more clues at all as to how this horrific disaster could have happened? It's baffling everyone. The authorities in the building behind me have just had a news conference. They say they have no idea how this happened. As you said, there is no engine on this train. There is no electrical source of power whatsoever. It's simply uh, pulled up the mountain. That will be uh, a problem now, finding how this happened. The workers who went inside the tunnel found just the metal base of the train, uh, nothing else. So perhaps the only hope is the nine survivors who are in hospital uh, close to here. They may provide some clue to this, the worst ski tragedy ever. Is there any more news on the Britons who are thought to have been involved? Well, we do now know that there are British dead. Uh, there was a conversation this afternoon between Tony Blair and the Austrian leader, and the Austrian leader offered his condolences. We do know that 23 Americans are missing. We're almost sure that most of the dead are Germans and Austrians, but the precise nationalities uh, we, do not, uh, we do not know. Um, we know that nine survived. It's uh, a surprise that nine people smashed their way out. So thick was the smoke, so intense the fire and this is a, a village tonight in deep shock. Bill Neely, thank you. 
Here, the south of England is braced tonight for yet more flooding after a day of torrential rain and high winds. The Environment Agency issued 70 flood warnings across the country this evening and 12 severe flood warnings, the most serious category. Richard Slee has the details. 24,000 gallons of water every minute are being pumped from the flooded fields of North Yorkshire. These are the largest portable pumps in the world, shipped in from Holland to move an area of water the size of Lake Windermere but they may not even cope with the rain expected over the next few days. As you can see behind me, this is a bit pumping out the washlands, not only to help people in the washlands who have been flooded, but also to make sure that the spare capacity should we have another, another deluge. Earlier today, a rare break in the clouds raised hopes the worst may be over. But with more rain forecast, it could be weeks, if not months, before the water levels get back to normal. And it's a similar tale in many other parts of Britain. Here in Chichester on the south coast, a massive operation is underway to divert flood water around the town. The emergency services are constructing a 30-mile pipeline, which they hope will save hundreds of homes and businesses. But with the land already saturated and rivers full, it's hard to see how they'll cope with any more water. And there's still concern about the River Severn in Gloucester. For now, all people can do is watch and wait and hope the river level doesn't reach the disastrous levels of the previous few weeks. Richard Slee, ITN.